गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन जय श्री माता जी Let's begin our day by bowing down to Shri Mata Ji, raising our Kundalini and taking a bandhan. very hearty welcome to everyone as we start our day together and meditate let us let us settle our attention by looking at mother's photograph In our hearts, we can do a small prayer Shri Mataji Mother, thank you for all your love all your blessings We thank you again and again and every day for our self-realization Shri Mataji you who are the mother of the universe please bring peace and balance the world please take everyone in this world under your beautiful umbrella of love can take a minute and in our own words in our hearts pray to Shri Mataji
Today we will be doing a short meditation. To settle our attention, strengthen our heart, then we'll be listening to Shrimadhiji's talk. So gently placing both our hands on or towards Mother Earth. Just take one mantra to Sri Ganesha. Mother Earth listens to you. Please forgive us as we step on you with our bare foot. Shri Ganesha, please remove all the obstacles in our spiritual ascent. And please manifest within us the pure innocence, love. and wisdom. we gently bring both our hands back to our lap. Let us sing the three great mantras.
Keeping our attention on our heart, how we can gently place our right hand on our center heart, and here, complete love, praying to Mother in our hearts, Shri Mataji, Ma, please remove all the fears all the insecurities, jealousies, and please fill my heart with the pure love. Pure love for everyone and myself. Keeping our right hand on our left heart. Let us sing one mantra to Sri Shiva Parvati. Om Dvameva Saksha Shri Shiva Parvati Sakshat Shri Adi Shakti Mataji Shri Nirmala Devi Namo Namaha Shri Mataji, please come in our hearts. Please remove all the impurities. Please remove all the dissatisfaction, the worries, the guilt. Worries about the future, about the past. Please remove them, Mother. And please fill my heart with pure love and joy.
confidently in our heart or out loud however you're feeling we can say together mother i am the spirit i am not these thoughts i am not this body not these thoughts i am the pure spirit gently bringing our right hand back to our lap let us silently meditate for a couple of minutes and we'll be listening to mother's talk talk we're going to be listening today is from 1983 so it's very nice to arrive here Sorry for what has happened before my coming here. But as I told you, that nature also can be awakened with the presence of a divine personality. And once it is awakened, it starts behaving in a manner as a realized soul would do. Like it gets angry with people. who are not religious people who don't want to know about god people who are doing wrong things in life people who are not normal people in the sense they don't uh, want to be part and parcel of the whole reclusers or sorts of people and once it is brought to that level then it starts working on its own as you know that according to sahaj yoga all these elements have got a deity behind it for example agni has got a deity called agni devta in pure form agni devta is the one who really purifies us it purifies everything it purifies say a gold if you put gold in the fire it doesn't burn it comes out 
more brilliant, better. But if it is something that is not of such value, it will burn out. So all inflammable things are mostly of a low grade things which are to be burnt only. But amazingly, these lower things only, when they are enlightened, or you can say when you put some wood you take and you put fire to it. So when fire is added to that wood, the same fire which is coming actually the base is that, the wood itself, which is inflammable. And the flames that are coming out of that fire, once they are enlightened, they starts knowing what is truth, what is untruth, or reacting in such a manner as if they knew what work has to be. Now the difference between a surgery and the fire which is so initiated is this, that it does not think about it. It just goes on completely finishing things which it has to do. And by a method of frequencies it knows where to go and which one to burn out. And that's how it goes on burning things which it has to burn. And <clears throat> some of the unfortunate things are that people feel that this fire has no compassion and that the fire must have some compassion also to spare some people. <laughs> but the trouble is we must understand that we have so many things within us We've got fire, we've got water, we've got Mother Earth, all elements are within us. But in the fire, it is only the fire element, nothing else. So it acts according to its own quality, that is fire. So whatever is the quality of the fire, when enlightened, separates truth from untruth and starts behaving in that manner. But it remains fire, it cannot become compassion. But in a way, if you see, when you start choosing between the wrong type of a person and the right type of a person, if you see in a subtle way, it is compassion because it is truth. And truth is love. So whatever it is doing is to manifest the love of God. And when it is manifesting the love of God, you should know that though it is fire, it gets the performance of a personality which is as if is a human being. Because it, it, it is discreet, it knows what to burn and what not to burn. One day, I must tell you, we were uh, doing some sort of a cleaning of the doors with those lamps you get. And Linda one day, you see, by mistake, brought that lamp very close to me. And the lamp, uh, the flame was very strong. It just went round me. He didn't touch me. She was surprised. She said, Mother, you're burning. I said, don't worry. It just went wrong and came out. So, the fire doesn't burn a person. It's pure. An example is Sita Ji. Sita Ji, when she was brought by Sri Rama from Ravana's place, see, everybody said that she has lived with Herakshasa and she must be found out. Uh, whether she is guilty or not. So Rama, first of all, he said, all right, you put the fire. She herself said that you put a fire, a fire of fire. And she sat on that. And when the fire started burning, it could not burn her. She could not be burnt. And the whole fire subsided. So that time, the Agni Devata knows what is right, what is wrong, who is holy, who is unholy. But human beings take a lot of time to recognize that and to understand even in Sahaja Yoga because the sensitivity has to be grown much more. Now why is it that anything that like water or Agni or any one of these elements become so sensitive that human beings are? How they just obediently do the thing as if as if they know the job and they are so quick at it, so efficient. The reason is they are completely under the control of the people. They are under the control of the powers of God. Absolutely, 
whatever God wants to do, once they are enlightened. But human beings are still, you see, dwindling between his own human awareness and the divine awareness and the oneness with the God. So it is the sensitivity in a person grows very, very slowly. That matter. Makes no difference. And when it grows, it comes, you see, it moves sometimes two steps forward and five steps backward. So you see, I've been like that the time, it is about two years you find you don't even at the same spot where you started. <laughs> and you get quite upset how it has happened despite surgery. But this is the thing is that human beings can think and they can decide and they have ultimate freedom to give up this sensitivity at any time. So, you have to be under complete obedience of the divine, which is one cannot understand sometimes how to be like that. Because we have not been brought up that way. We don't know how to do it. It's very difficult. So many people say, Mother, it is very difficult to surrender. It's not that they don't want to surrender. But they say, think that we are still, you see, popping up somewhere. Mother says something that we start questioning her. Mother says this, then we think that we should, we can suggest to Mother this, another alternative, and this and that. But there is no alternative. See, there is no alternative for a person who is a sensible person. If he knows that divine is only thinking of your hita, of your well-being, and whatever it sees and does, you see, knows much more than you do. Much, much more. And in so many dimensions that if somebody says so, that do like this, best is to do that. Sometimes it shocks people. People have ideas about sympathies, ideas about being you see, kind to others and compassionate to others. But what is a human compassion? It doesn't do anything. It just talks. Why? The God's compassion works. It works. It works on people. It doesn't talk that, oh, I'm very compassionate, I'm full of compassion, nothing. It just works. It manifests. So, one should understand. To be a complete egoist personality, one should try to obey the self within yourself. Now, how do you obey yourself within yourself? It is through vibratory Try to obey through your vibratory Any question you want to ask, anything you want to do, you must obey it through your vibratory awareness. Now some people are not so sensitive. That's true. The reason why they are not sensitive is because they think about it. Now you think with your brain. Alright? If your brain can be enlightened, then you will think as the divine thing and your sensitivity will improve. Because sensitivity comes from the central nervous system. Now, in the central nervous system, if there is any blockage, it is actually in the brain. Because all the centers are represented in the brain. So, the best thing is to say that, Mother, come in my brain. Please reside in my brain. Please make your room in this brain. You be the controller of this brain. Let this brain be guided by your divine brain. And you don't think for yourself. And this word, I think, should be dropped completely from such a thing. I think means goes on, let's see, funny way. It can be anything, you see. Like once we went out and we had one of my very stupid uh, relations staying with us, a girl. And uh, as I was going out, we had no service that day. So I, I was cooking, but that day when we were going out, so I told her I was going in the morning. Can you make a little bit of khichdi for us when we come back, we'll have that. That's the only cooking she did in her life, I mean, which she did not do also. So when we came back, uh, she told me that she had not cooked. So I said, what? Why didn't you cook? Because we were supposed to take our food here. She said, I, I thought that maybe you may not come. Maybe you're not hungry. Maybe you may not like to eat. Maybe I may not do all these four alternatives not to do the thing. But I said, why did you think that we may be hungry, that we will eat? Why did you think this way? But I thought, you see, this is an explanation for uh, not having one in the brain, I should say, that there is no divine uh, guidance in the brain.
she left the chair. Gently raising a few strands of Kundalini to our Sahasrara. Here together let us pray, Mother, Mother please come in our brain, please reside in our brain. Together, let us complete our meditation by singing the last of the three great mantras. Om Tvameva Saksha Shri Palki Saksha Shri Sahastrara Swamini Moksha Pradayani Mataji Shri Nirmala Devi Namo Nama Shri Mataji Thank you everyone for joining. Wish you all a beautiful, balanced and normal day ahead. Leave the music on for some time and as you're leaving, bow down, raise your kundalini and take a bandhan. Jai Shri Mataji.
Evan. Thank you everyone. Yes, Shimataji.